As the fuel in the tank gets over, the moving car on the road stops. As soon as the fuel is refilled, then it starts moving again. What does fuel have which enhance the motion of the car? As we have seen in a previous videos too, that electric generator generates electricity. Generator changes mechanical energy into electrical energy. Now the question arises, what drives the generator? Do we put fuel in the tank of the generator too, which helps in rotating the shaft of the generator? It would be correct to say that there is something in the fuel which enhances the motion of the shaft and the car. Actually, fuel has some form of energy stored in itself which transfer it to the engine of the car and generator. It's all about energy only. We are surrounded by various forms of energies in the world. Let's take another example to understand this concept better. We eat food when we feel hungry. After eating, we feel fulfilled. This food helps us in doing different work like studying, playing and walking. Food is a source of energy which provides power to our bodies and with the help of that energy we do various work. Can we produce energy? No, we can't produce it. We can only change one form of energy to another. According to the law of conservation of energy, energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, only can be changed from one form to another. Let's take an example of potential and kinetic energy. We did some work to put this ball on the top of the slide. Due to this work done, a difference in height is obtained which gives this ball some potential energy. If we push this ball a bit then the potential energy gets converted into kinetic energy. If this ball collides with a bunch of sticks and the sticks fall apart, here the kinetic energy of the ball did some work on the sticks to fall them apart. Let's understand the whole chain again. Firstly, the work is converted into potential energy. Secondly, potential energy is then converted into kinetic energy. Thirdly, kinetic energy is converted into some work. Again, this rule is followed by everyone and everything in this world. Change of one form of energy to another is known as transformation of energy. If you look closely then from a moving bicycle to the moving car, from a moving train to a flying aircraft, from cooking the food to the energy taken from that food, each and everything is an example of transformation of energy. There are basically two kinds of sources of energy in the world. 1. Conventional sources of energy. 2. Non-conventional sources of energy. In today's video, we'll learn about the conventional sources of energy. Those sources of energy which we have been using for centuries are known as conventional sources of energy, like fossil fuels, thermal power plant, hydropower plant, biomass and wind energy. Let us understand what fossil fuels are. Millions of years ago, living beings living in the world got buried under the various layers of earth. Due to high temperature and pressure, some of them got converted into petroleum and others got converted into coal. In India, 70% of the total consumption of energy is covered by coal, petroleum and natural gas. Coal is the largest source of carbon. Coal when burns in air reacts with oxygen present in the air to form carbon dioxide. Various components of petroleum like petrol, diesel etc. are used in different ways as per their needs. This coal is used in thermal power plants to generate electricity. Let's understand the thermal power plant closely. Thermal power plants generate 50% of the total electrical energy worldwide. It has majorly five components, boiler, turbine, condenser, generator and transformer. The burning coal in the boiler heats up the water in the tubes and converts it into steam. This steam is responsible for rotating the turbine due to the increase in pressure. Another end of the turbine is connected to the generator. Generator converts its mechanical energy into electrical energy. This electrical energy is then transmitted via transmission line to reach different grids. 
and the steam gets condensed with the help of the condenser and sent back for reusing. This is the cheapest and easiest way to generate electricity because water and coal are available in abundance. But it is one of the major causes of air pollution too. Next conventional source of energy is hydropower plant. In hydropower plants, a dam is built on a river and water gets stored at a place. The river has to go through many tests before the final approval of the dam. Due to the difference in height, water stored at the highest point got potential energy. And then through a special area, water is flown in the downward direction. The potential energy of water gets converted into the kinetic energy. This kinetic energy helps the turbine blade to rotate, which is then connected to the shaft of the generator. Generator converts the mechanical energy from turbine to electrical energy. This is then sent forward with the help of transmission lines. The pros of this source of energy is that there is very less pollution and the cost is lower too. But one of the major cons of this source is that due to the construction of the dam, a large area gets sunk into the water. Due to this, people living there have to leave their land and surroundings also gets affected by this. Another form to convert the energy is by biomass plants. We have seen dried cow dung and the remains of agriculture is used as a fuel in villages. But there is a lot of air pollution due to this activity and less energy is received. To convert more amount of energy, huge biomass plants are constructed. First step to construct a biomass plant is to dig a large hole in the ground which is known as digester. Cow dung and agricultural waste are filled with the water in the ratio of 1 is to 3 from the mouth of the plant. Then in the digester, anaerobic microorganisms that do not require oxygen decompose or break down complex compounds of the cow dung slurry. It takes a few days for the decomposition process to be complete and generate gas like methane, carbon dioxide, hydrogen and hydrogen sulfide. The biogas is stored in the gas tank above the digester from which they are drawn through pipes for use. The remains can be used as fertilizers in the fields. The last source of energy is known as wind energy which can be found where wind flows swiftly. Large windmills are used to convert wind energy into electrical energy with the help of a generator. We enlightened many conventional sources of energy. In our next video, we will learn about the non-conventional sources of energy. As we learned about the conventional sources of energy and how electrical energy is obtained from various kinds of energy, the main source of energy is fossil fuels. The rate at which these fossil fuels are used, one day will come when they will become extinct. Then from where we will get the energy, have you ever thought of it? There are other sources of energy too, which are known as non-conventional sources of energy. Non-conventional sources of energy are those sources of energy in which new ways are incorporated to obtain energy from one form to another. These are renewable sources of energy that are continuously replenished by natural processes. They are majorly of four types. Solar energy, energy from the sea, geothermal energy and nuclear energy. Let's understand each source one by one. As we all know that sunlight is present in abundance in India, do you know that we can convert the solar energy into electrical energy? To convert this energy, solar cells of silicon are kept in the sunlight. These cells help in collecting the energy and store it in a battery. Then this energy can be used later. In cities, people do implant solar panels on their terrace. Then the energy stored are used to run various devices. This method of converting energy has a high initial cost, but in the coming years, consumption can increase. Second form of energy is obtained from the sea. Likewise, we learned about the hydropower plant in our last video. Here too, there are three kinds of sources. Tidal energy, wave energy and ocean thermal energy. 
entitle energy due to high and low tides near the shores of the ocean turbine rotates and with the help of the generator electricity can be produced in wave energy a huge pipe is placed near the shore of the ocean due to the motion of the wave the air pressure in the pipe increases and decreases and the turbine blades gets rotated in ocean thermal energy rays coming from the sun fall on the ocean and make the uppermost layer hot and increase the temperature of that layer conversely the lower layer of water is still cold this change in temperature is used to rotate the blades of the turbine a plant is placed in the ocean having an evaporator and a condenser pipe is filled with liquid ammonia ammonia is sensitive towards the change in temperature when it comes in contact with the hot water liquid ammonia converts into vapor and helps in rotating the blades of the turbine when it goes down near the condenser it gets condensed and the cycle repeats itself third one is geothermal energy you must have seen or heard about the boiling water or steam coming out of the earth This water comes out because of the temperature difference. Let's go a bit deeper to understand this concept. Hot magma is present in the core of the earth. Due to the motion of tectonic plates, it heats up the rocks just above it. When the ground water converts into the steam after coming in contact with these rocks, it starts moving towards the earth's surface. When it reaches the earth's surface, it is pumped out in the form of boiling water or steam. The steam is used to rotate the blades of the turbine by passing it through a particular area, a pipe in this case. With the help of the generator, the mechanical energy of the turbine can be converted into electrical energy. The last source of energy is known as nuclear energy. They are of two types: nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. Let's understand Einstein's E is equal to mc square equation first to understand this. Einstein equated two equitable quantities, energy and mass. Einstein stated that the mass can be converted into energy and vice versa. Let's understand this closely. If a heavier nucleus such as uranium is taken, due to size the unstable nucleus of the uranium will try to become stable. To stabilize this a low energy neutron is bombarded with it then we will get two stable nuclei. In this process a huge amount of energy is released which can be used to obtain electrical energy. The combined weight of these two nuclei will be lesser than the former one. This means an amount of mass has been converted into the energy. In the second case fusion takes place. Here two lighter nuclei fuse with each other to form a heavy nucleus. Like hydrogen nucleus are fused to form helium. Due to the repulsion between the hydrogen nuclei formation of helium is only possible at higher temperature say more than 10 to the power 6 kelvin this kind of temperature can't be possible on earth but if we see the sun this kind of temperature is possible fusion takes place on the sun commonly the remaining nuclear energy is dangerous to human life and the environment that is why when nuclear energy is obtained people take care of safety first We are among the tiniest in the whole universe but our brain is not. Invention and discoveries are the example of using human brain at the right place. Likewise the brain is the cause of destruction as well. We should acknowledge our duty towards nature and keep working in a direction to make this world a better place for everyone.